Hello there, my beautiful runners. Thank you for joining me on this yoga sequence for runners. Well, actually, the word yoga is just clickbait because this sequence is not just pure yoga. It's everything that an actual runner would need. Not just some random poses, but some very specific targeted exercises to make sure you feel absolutely amazing in your body when you go for your run. To get started, you'll need a yoga mat and one of these, a foam roller. Once you're ready to get going, comes the top of your yoga mat. So we don't need this right now, we're gonna set it to the side. However, the principle of the foam roller is to release the fascia that is on the side of your leg, and often that can cause patella femoral syndrome where the, the patella moves out. There's actually a really great yoga um, stretch that we can do to help alleviate the same part of your body. Take your right leg behind your left leg, <laughs> and then inhale, take the right arm up and over so you're feeling a side body stretch. Now, if you isolate the movement just in your side body, there's a lot of good stuff going on there because it'll also have a relationship down the side of the leg, but squeezing your glute is actually another really nice way to target the TFL and the IT band. Those are just structures that get tight on the side of the body when you're a runner. So we're gonna take one more big breath here and then lift it up, and then we're gonna cross the left leg behind the right leg and do the same thing where we stretch the left arm up. Now another little hack that you can do is just be mindful that your ribs are down, because as the ribs flare, it shifts the focus, and it's not gonna be as targeted along that side lateral line of the body as you need it to be if you are a runner. So just be mindful of that. Again, I'm gonna give you one more big giant breath. Okay, and we're gonna do it one more time both sides and we're just gonna add in a little extra zhuzh. Take your right leg behind your left, lift the right arm up and take your um, left hand around your wrist and actually pull the arm. Um, not so much that you hurt your shoulder but there's a little bit of a stretch going on because everything in your body is connected and that fascia that you are pulling on right now is actually having a positive effect all the way down. Great, let's take that same concept to the other side. Ribs down, squeezy bum, pull out through that arm. Feels so amazing, oh my God. Okay guys, let's bring it all the way back up again. Of course, if it felt amazing, you need longer, you can just press pause. Um, we're now gonna take the inhale with the arms reaching up. Exhale, instead of doing a forward fold, we're just gonna go halfway into Ardha Uttanasana. Here, if you don't wanna keep the arms reaching out because it's a bit heavy, you can always lower them down. And I want you to pay particular attention to where the knees are in relation to the toes. If they're collapsed in, it means your glutes are weak, so externally rotate through the knees without the feet turning, keep them facing forward. Lift the tailbone up without the ribs flaring. Now in this half lift position, continue to fold down until you feel a gentle stretch on the hamstrings, but without letting go of your core and that strength in the back body that you just found. Once you've arrived in your forward fold, reach across for your opposite elbows and let's take a sway here left and right should feel really strong as you work into your mobility. This is not just passive, you've still got some active strength through the joints. Relax it down into the center, relax your hands, and what we're gonna do is bend the knees again forward over the toes, tuck the tailbone, but really squeeze the glutes. At the same time, really squeeze your stomach. So we're starting to roll up powerfully through all the bones of the back as we arrive in standing. Now, once you arrived in standing, I want you to look down at your feet and without the feet actually rolling in or out, keeping the ankles dead still, just lift the big toes on their own. I have another video where I talk about running alignment and I explain why this exercise is so important and I'll link that for you guys now. Change, push the big toes down, lift the other four toes up. And as you look at the foot, double check that the foot hasn't rolled in to accommodate these four toes lifting. We're gonna switch now a little bit quicker. If you're finding it hard, go slow. Big toe, four toes. Big toe, four toes. Big toe, four toes, last one. Awesome guys, inhale again, reach the arms all the way up. Keep your body facing the front of your mat. Exhale again, go into that half, half deadlift sort of position, Ardha Uttanasana. Belly in, tailbone up, ribs connected, and feel the strength around the middle section of the body as you go down to your forward fold. 
Step back, find your downward dog, and put a little micro bend into your right knee. Put the same awareness into the inner arch of the foot. So the big toe mound is down, but the inner arch is up. And then hook your left foot behind your right calf and gently stretch the calf out. Now, the body is not two-dimensional. It's, of course, got many different things. So we're going to do something called the rainbow stretch. We're going to pull the heel to the middle of our mat, toes face outwards. That inner arch stays strong. Now point the foot straight back the where it was. And then last one, point the toes in, but the heel out. Cool, and we'll do the same thing on the other side. So now left heel faces to the back of the mat. And when you look at the foot, check that inner arch is strong. Big toe mound is grounded. Hook your right foot around the left calf and gently stretch it down. Rainbow stretch time, toes out, heel in. Foot stays very still and steady through the midfoot, but that outer edge of the calf is getting a bit of, a bit of space. <laughs> And then straight down through the middle again. Check that you haven't collapsed in your ribs or your shoulders. Stay strong by pressing the floor away. And then we change foot in, heel out. Great job, you guys. Okay, your feet are now gonna face straight forwards. Have a little cycle and step your right foot forward between your hands, left knee, bend at 90 degrees. Okay, we are gonna do, I personally feel, one of the most important exercises any runner could ever do. It's gonna actually be mimicking running as you move, but there's a lot of little technical things I'm gonna to have to go through, so bear with me while we do that. You're gonna lift the back heel up towards your butt, and you're gonna take your left elbow down to touch your right knee. Now this is essentially a single leg squat, and as you do the single leg squat, there's a few things you've gotta be mindful of. One, make sure that the inner arch of the foot stays lifted and the big toe mound stays grounded. Two, the knee tracks directly over the toe. Now to rise up, press through the heel and be aware of your pelvis. If it dips and the hip goes to the side, that means glute meat is weak, suck it in. Lift the left knee all the way up into the chest. Another good glute meat burner coming up. Knee lifts up without the body leaning back. Bottom leg is straight. Twist right elbow to touch left knee. Now we're gonna make these two points smooth and connected towards each other. So instead of going as slowly, we're now going smoothly down and smoothly up. As you move more smoothly, most people have like a bit of postural sway that happens. Notice where that postural sway happens because that's your weak spot. So you're gonna to have to really engage mentally around that to stay strong. We're going for rep four now, my loves. Well done. I can't believe it's already rep four. And then we're gonna do our final rep. Oh my goodness, my ass is burning. <sighs> Place that foot down on the ground, shake it out on the other side. <sighs> okay guys, let's flow through all of that again. Inhale, rise up through the arms, exhale, tailbone reaches back, chest reaches forward. Put one hand on the body, uh, belly, one hand on your glutes, check you're strong in the middle body. Keep all of that engaged as you fold down. Little gentle stretch on your hammies. Step the legs back, first into plank, find your strength. Lift the hips up into your downward dog. Other side, step the left foot forward. Bend the right knee one inch above the ground. Rise up through your shoulders and squeeze your butt. Take your right elbow now to touch the left knee, lifting the right heel towards your butt. And I want you to focus on your twist coming from your rib cage. So the thoracic spine is where your twist is. And you're not letting any kind of dip or change or twist come into the pelvis, especially as you switch to the other side. Now here is where you're getting the greatest glute max, glute med firing if you keep all of your joints in alignment. Four more reps, you guys. Again, twist from your ribs, knee over toe. Rise up by pushing through that heel. Number three. These ones always kill me. My ass hurts so bad after. Let me know in the comments if your ass is burning too. <laughs> It'll make me feel so much better. Good guys, you know, I can really feel that as I lose my concentration, I've got that sway. So I want you guys to be particularly mindful as you move. Where do those little sways happen in your body? We have one more to go. 
and then stand up tall and touch okay amazing so quick recap while you're resting this is targeting the way the glutes interact as you're running and it also gets the mobility to happen in the rib cage for the twist opposing hand opposing leg so that all the movement is not getting soggy around your lower back which needs stability now this idea of actually firing up through your glutes is super important i've got some other videos on my channel which work glute max quite hard and i'll link that for you but right now let's do a little bit of a um, little bit more on glute mead because i haven't done much of that on this channel so you're gonna start inside lying and what a lot of people do as soon as they lie on their side for any kind of exercises um, is they sort of collapse into their posture and their belly hangs out I want you to actually engage. So as if you've got your neutral S-curve in your spine, you're really strong through this whole midsection of the body. Now we're gonna target glute med, and there are obviously lots of different theories about how to do that. I actually want us to work the external rotation portion of the fibers because I feel like everyone's knees are collapsing in when they're running and this is really, really harmful for their knee joints. So turn your toes up to the ceiling, turn your knee up to the ceiling and actually put your hand on the upper, back portion of your butt and then lift the leg just until you feel that muscle kicking in so it's not very high it's actually quite low but it's just to feel that muscle waking up good four five cores on six seven eight nine and ten good we're going to switch it around to the other side this is so good to do just before you go running. So again, get your ribs engaged, feel your S curve in your spine, turn your toes up, put your hand on the back portion of your butt as you start to lift and lower the leg. Now you are not gonna turn your feet out when you're running, absolutely not. Your feet are gonna track forwards and your knees are gonna go over your toes. But these days people sit down a lot and so what happens is their knees collapse inwards and this is exactly what we're trying to avoid. Now I've completely lost count while I'm babbling at you guys, but we're going for 10 reps. So if you've reached your 10 rep stop now, I'll do a couple more for anyone who maybe hasn't quite reached number 10 yet. Good guys, last one. We are gonna go back to the first side, switcheroo. Strong middle body, strong core. Now the reason I'm getting you to turn your toes up okay, even though glute med uh, also works with toes down into internal rotation, is because your TFL, the tensor fascia lata, the little muscle at the front, links to your IT band along the side of the body. And that very tight connection is often what causes runner's knee. So turning the toes up just helps switch off TFL and helps target the glute med and also portion of your glute max, which is really important, like I explained, for that femur. Again, we were going for 10. God knows what number we're on now. Let's imagine this is number 10. Hopefully you're counting to help me out. And then we'll switch. And I know I've been talking a lot, guys. So I'm going to leave you in peace for the last round. Seven. I'm finally counting. Eight. <laughs> Nine. And 10, okay, my love. So the reason we have the torture instrument called foam roller here is because we are gonna foam roll the side of our leg. Now there is a lot of conflicting evidence about using foam rollers. Some people say it's a complete waste of time, but as someone that has worked with many runners that have had many bad injuries along their knees, I have found that it's made significant improvements on people's patellar femoral syndrome, known as runner's knee. Now the cool thing is your IT band actually doesn't necessarily have that much change but all the fascia underneath it linking into your quadricep the whole lateral border of the leg is going to get more blood flow so you're not going to hurt anything by doing a good old foam rolling session so i'm going to actually start on my left leg right foot is like a support my left hand is underneath me and i'm going to start the rolling process the most important part of the outer leg that you can foam roll is actually the tfl that little muscle right near the very top of the hip and when you get there really spend a bit of time maybe rolling side to side again we're getting blood flow in there we're releasing trigger points and this is going to have the most significant change on the it band 
Told you this wasn't proper yoga, huh? We're not gonna get foam rollers out in our yoga practice because there's only so much stretching can do. So actually bringing your foam roller out to play is one of the best things you can do for your body. Okay, and then we are gonna shimmy on down a little bit further. So I'm gonna go quite rapidly through this. If you feel that you have a bit more time, maybe whack on a Netflix movie and then do your foam rolling while you watch something. Okay, beautiful. So we've gone all the way through the length on the lateral border of the leg, and now we're gonna switch sides. So just start off going very globally throughout the whole lateral border of the leg. And then we start finding and searching out the trigger points. So if there's some magical sweet spot where your eyes start rolling into the back of your head, you know you're on the right spot. Hold that spot and just wait for it to dissipate. So side of the leg is all fun and games, but remember that TFL, go right to the edge of your iliac crest, that's the top of your pelvis. And see if you can find that little muscle, that little muscle, which is actually so, so powerful in terms of tightening up the lateral border of the leg. Remember forward and back as well as side to side movements are really helpful on a foam roller. Okay, guys, we've got a big foam rolling session now up and down the outer leg. So you're just going more globally along everything. Great stuff. And then when you are done, we are now going to use the foam roller one last time. And that is for our calves. And often my yogis, you know, they doing loads of downward dog. And so they should have these amazingly flexible calves. But but actually their calves are very tight and they discover that when they're on the foam roller. And I'm telling you this just to reiterate that sometimes stretching isn't enough. Notice how I've crossed my ankles. This is to add a little bit more weight. If you're feeling like, wow, actually this is super painful, butt stays on the ground. You don't have to hurt yourself. However, if you want more, you can lift your butt up and you can roll forward and back and you can turn into a high pitched opera singer because it's that intense. <laughs> I might keep my butt down. <laughs> and so just for anybody else who's watching this, who's not a, the biggest fan of running, that was me. I still struggle with it, but I can now, with these little exercises that I've taught you today, I can do a 5k and my body's not in pain like it used to be. So please do this video because I promise it'll make such a big difference to your running technique. We're gonna switch sides on our calf muscles. This time left is down, right crosses, butt up or down, roll it out side to side or forward and back. It's one of those pleasure pain things, right? You're like this, I know this is good for me, so I'm gonna keep doing it, but oh my goodness. <laughs> Well, goodness, why is it so painful? <sighs> okay, my loves, I think that's enough foam rolling for one day. Thank you so much for doing this video with me. It has been an absolute pleasure. Remember to hit like, subscribe, remember to leave me a comment, hit the notification bell. <sighs> And after all of those things, if you'd like another free class all about glutes, then this link there will take you to that. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.